fraction and division of a rational expression. So again, rational expressions are just fractions with variables in them. And so we want to simplify and cancel stuff when we have a problem like this. What do you guys think we have to do in order to cancel things in this problem? Sam? Yes, we actually have to factor each piece, the numerator, denominator, the numerator, denominator, then see if we can simplify, okay? So we're going to start by factoring x squared plus x minus 12. So there's really a 1x right here, which means we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to positive 1. Ian, what do you think? Very good. x plus 4 and x minus 3. Okay. Now I'm going to factor, tractor this denominator x squared minus 1x minus 20. So we're looking for what multiplies to negative 20 and adds to negative 1. Landry, what do you think that would be? Good. Negative 5 and positive 4 times. All right, now we've got x squared plus 2x minus 35. We're looking for what multiplies to negative 35 and adds to positive 2. Anna, what do you think? Plus what? Good. Plus 7 and minus 5. Awesome. Okay. And now we've got x squared plus 9x plus 14. So we're looking for what multiplies to 14 and adds to 9. Ethan, what do you think? Okay. x plus 2, x plus 7. Very good. Okay. You can cancel any of those parentheses if they're numerator, denominator. So even if they're on opposite fractions, I guess, okay, you can cancel as long as it's one's on the top and one's on the bottom. So Kaden, give me a set that cancels. <coughs> yes, x is 7, x is 7. And Chloe, another set that cancels. <coughs> x plus 4 and x plus 4. Does anything else cancel? Yes, Nate. Good. <coughs> so I'm left with x minus 3 <coughs> over x plus 2, and that would be my answer, okay? If everything cancels, what do we have left? One. Good. Ian? <coughs> like do this. Yep. You can do that. Okay? All right. What's different about this problem than the last problem? It's divide, all right? So if we have divide when we have uh, fractions, you guys, what do we do? Yeah, we copy, dot, flip. Okay, so we flip the second fraction. So let's do it as we go. That's what I like to do. Um, so let's start with this one. X squared minus 9, or minus 6X plus 9. So multiplies to positive 9, adds to Negative 3, Olivia, what do you think that would be? Or add to negative 6? I think I said that. Okay. You got it. X minus 3, X minus 3. Two negative 3s would multiply to a positive 9. All right? And now we need multiplies to negative 24, adds to positive 5. Rachel, what do you think that would be? Good x plus 8, x minus 3. All right, so the next one I'm going to do is this one right here, and it's moving to the top, so I'm going to write it in the top after I factor tractor it, all right? So Jordan, what do you think? Uh, multiply to negative 72 and add to negative 1. Good. Very good. Okay. And this top one... We've got multiplies to positive 6 and adds to negative 5. Bailey, what do you think? X minus 3, X minus 2, good. That would multiply to a positive and add to negative 5, good. 
Okay, and Sydney, what can we now cancel? Okay, x minus 3, x minus 3, and x minus 3, x minus 3. And Sam, what else cancels? Good, x plus 8 and x plus 8. So my answer is x minus 9 over x minus 2. Okay. You actually, there's a, we probably should do this one. We should have put the last one instead because that was easy. All right. Copy dot flip again. We've got a few different things in here, so let's do this one quickly. <coughs> so, Stephen, what multiplies to negative 8 adds to positive 2? Okay, x plus 4, x minus 2. Good. This one, you guys, has two steps. We actually have to factor a what first before we can actually do the rest of the factoring. Yes, a GCF of an X. So I'm going to write it real small underneath. So if we factor out the X, we are left with this. Okay, so now I'm going to write my two sets of parentheses. So we have the GCF of X. Now I'm looking for what multiplies to negative 21 at negative 4. So Kira, what do you think that would be? Good, which one would be negative? Yep, because we want to add to negative 4. All right, now I am going to change this to a time sign because it's divide, which means we have to flip this fraction. The x minus 2 can just stay in the denominator. There's nothing to factor here. And we're going to add some parentheses so that it can multiply here. And then this is a little bit different right here. Okay. This one does not factor as, like, what multiplies to this adds to this. It just has a GCF. So, Dan, what's the GCF of that? Uh, yes, just an X. And what's left is X minus 7. All right. So, this is a little bit different. Did these X's cancel, you guys? Yes. Since they're being multiplied, you can cancel those X's. And then we can cancel x minus 7 and x minus 2. That's the fun part. So we're left with x plus 4 over x plus 3. Okay? Questions? Everyone got it? All right. We do have a new factoring method. Don't pack it in. This is important. Um, so we just did all easy factoring. That was all, like, super simple factoring. We're going to start doing the hard factoring now. So go ahead and write this down. Did you guys factor ones that had a coefficient besides 1 <coughs> last year in Algebra 1? Do you guys remember? You did. You don't remember how? Okay. Right. So anytime we're going to do AC factoring, sometimes I call this rainbow method, but we're going to do AC factoring in order to solve, which means we're going to make it into four terms. So this time, because we have this number in front, we can't just do this the easy way. So we're actually looking for what multiplies to negative 10. How did I get negative 10? I multiplied A times C. We call this A, B, C. So A, C. So that's negative 10. And I'm looking for what adds, still to the middle term here, negative 9. Okay? So what multiplies to negative 10, because that's the 2 times negative 5, and adds to negative 9, you guys? <coughs> Dan? Good. Negative 10 times positive 1 would multiply negative 10 and add to negative 9. Okay, whatever it is that multiplies to that and adds to that, okay, just like we did before, we're going to replace our middle term with these. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2x squared minus 10x plus 1x minus 5. These can actually go in either <coughs> order, okay? If you put the plus 1x first, you'll get the same answer, all right? So my factors went here, and I replaced that with minus 10x plus 1x. It's still equal to negative 9x, right? So I'm not really changing the value of the trinomial. Now we factor by grouping. So I'm actually going to look at just the first two terms right here. What factors out of the first two terms? 
Chloe. Two X. Okay, and what's left over if I take out a two X? X minus five. All right, in the second two terms, now we group these together and we factor out what's common. This one just has a one. There's nothing to pull out, so you take out a one. And I'm left with X minus five. Okay, these parentheses have to match or you messed up. Okay, they have to match. X minus five, X minus five. All right, now whatever you factored out, goes together as your first set of parentheses. So 2x plus 1, and then x minus 5 is your second set of parentheses, and you factored. We are going to need two more of these to make sure we get this. All right, AC method factoring. How do I know I have to do the hard factoring? There's a 6 in front of my x squared. Anything besides 1, and we have to do the process, all right? So we're looking for what multiplies to be what, you guys? Negative 12, all right? Multiplies to negative 12, and adds to be what? Adds to be 1, okay? So, Angela, what multiplies to negative 12 and adds plus 1? positive 4, and negative 3. What do we do with these? We replace the middle term with them. So I'm going to rewrite this as 6x squared plus 4x minus 3x minus 2. So instead of the middle term, I replaced it with plus 4x minus 3x in either order. I could have put minus 3x plus 4x, and I'll still get the right answer. Okay. Now we factor by grouping. So Reyna, what can I factor out of the first two terms here? 2x. And Nate, what's left over? Nate in the front. If I take out a 2x. Good. Awesome. All right. And now I need to factor out of the second set of parentheses here. Um, Leo, if there's nothing to factor out, what do we take out? Very good. We actually have to take a negative out. If this third term is negative, you want to take a negative out. Okay. Third term meaning 1, 2, 3. So if this is negative, go ahead and factor out a negative 1. Plus, what do I need inside these parentheses? I need these to match. So if I take out that negative 1, it changes both sides. Okay, my answer is what I factored out. So 2x minus 1. And that double set of parentheses we just write one time. 3x plus 2. What would happen if I foiled this out or I foiled this out? What should I get back to? The original trinomial, okay? You could always check. We're going to do one more hard one just to make sure we got it. Okay, write that down. 6x squared minus 4x minus 16. Okay, we're looking for what multiplies to be what? 6 times 16. 96. Negative 96, okay? And adds to be... <coughs> negative 4. Oh, that's a fun one. If you don't know, guess what you have to do? Find everything that multiplies to be 96, right? So 1 times 96. 2 <coughs> times 48. 3 times, what would that be? 32. 4 times, I'm guessing 4 goes into that. 4 times 26. Does 5 go into it? Does 6 go into it? Yeah, we just did 6 times 16, right? Did we get that number? That one still only gives us 12 if we subtract. Does 7 go into it? How about 8? 8 goes into it, right? 12 times. Do we have a winner? I think we do. 8 times 12. Which one has to be negative in order to add to a negative 4, you guys? Negative 12. So right here, we're going to replace it, my middle term, either order. So I'm going to do plus 8x minus 12x in the middle. Okay, factor by grouping here. So Lindsay, what comes out of these two? Yes, 2x 
and we have 3x plus 4 left over. If the third term's negative, factor out of the negative. So, Nate, in the back, what do you think we factor out of these two terms? Biggest number there. Yeah, and it's negative here, so negative 4. And that would leave me with 3x plus 4. Yay, those match, so we get 2x minus 4 and 3x plus 4. Anybody notice something about this? Do we have a GCF there? What could we have done at the very beginning to make this easier? Factored out a 2. Okay. But I didn't notice, so I'm going to go ahead and do it now. So we can actually take a 2 out of that first set of parentheses, and the second one just stays the same. Okay, I just took the 2 out. Oops, so the 2x minus 4. Sorry, Angela. Um, and we're good to go. Okay. I could have taken it out first. Might have made my factoring a little easier, but that's it.